back to the capital city, Columbia. We are so happy because the South Carolina Department of Agriculture is right here, and they have a fine young lady, Jennifer Badger, and she heads up the South Carolina Specialty Foods Association, and they're just no fun to work with at all, are they? Not, none whatsoever, Amanda. <laughs> um, the no. best entrepreneurs and <laughs> most fun, exciting, innovative people in the world. They are, and I'll tell you what, it takes a lot of coffee to keep these folks on track, but <laughs> they um, they make a lot of really great products, and uh, definitely Loveland Coffee is no exception to that, and I'm going to introduce Beach, who is owner and head uh, roaster of Loveland Coffee, and Tell us a little bit more about, about what you guys are doing in Lexington. Yeah, we, we got a lot of things going on. We're actually closer to Irmo okay. um, in the St. Andrews area. But I just want to take a quick moment to say hello to my three kids at home, Zoe, Shiloh, and Ezra, and my beautiful wife. They're on the other home watching now. But um, hello. Yeah, we, yeah, hey. yeah. Hey, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're really excited. Our, our passion is definitely coffee, but that's fueled by our passion for our community and the people we serve. So we're all about providing a quality good and service and we feel we provide that pretty well at our retail location and by producing a quality product at our roastery. Now did you have just kind of an interesting career a little bit of going to college and not going to college and working and kind of learned about the the service industry and, and is that how you ended up in coffee? Yeah I spent a lot, a lot of my career in the service industry and then it kind of gradually led to the coffee industry and I instantly fell in love with the craft of making a quality coffee and then later on roasting and then being able to share that with others in my community and building up community and around that whole structure was just a perfect fit for me. And so this is the being here is what you guys start with that's what you import and then what's around it that's that's the final roasting. Yeah product, it comes to right? us green uh, Mm -hmm. And how many, how do you source it and how many different types of beans do you get? Um, I have about nine to ten currently that we have available from different regions around the world and then we do also have a blend. Here we have an example is our Soda City Sunrise blend which is a uh, Brazilian and a Colombian bre uh, blend. But we do have single origin coffees that we source from all over the world. And so based on where they're from, that affects the flavor profile and the, you said you guys like to use medium to light roast. Yeah, we, let, we like to let the origin coffee speak for themselves and we do that by roasting to a medium to medium light roast profile and that allows each individual um, origin and for instance Ethiopian coffee allows the more fruit notes and citric notes to come through in that type of roast. So some of these are going to be much bolder and some you said actually are almost more like a cup of tea. Yeah, our, our Ethiopian one I just described almost drinks like a, a black tea with a heavy blueberry note to it. Wow. Gosh, it's, it's really like wild. That, sounds, that yeah. sounds great. <laughs> and um, now can you have them um, get them whole or ground or how do you recommend that people we, we do it? We package them whole bean and then our customers that come through at the drive through if they request it to be ground we will. Um, it does stay fresher longer if it remains whole bean and you kind of grind to demand as you as you go through your, your week brewing your coffee. But if you don't have time to grind your own coffee you have a great uh, I guess substitute for that. Yeah. We, or an uh, alternative. Our, Cold brewed coffee concentrate can be used as a ready to brew coffee just by adding hot water to it. So you would add. How do you make cold brew coffee? It's a 24 hour brewing process. We steep coffee in cold water for two, uh, 24 hours. And when we strain it off, it's super concentrated and it removes the acidic and bitterness oh. uh, from the coffee. And then you just add hot water to it? Yep. So for one, for an eight ounce cup of coffee, you could put two ounces of that and the rest hot water and it'd be ready to go. Well, now, I know for me, with the hot weather coming on. I was going to say, uh, let's talk I, about iced coffee. I really like iced coffee, and so with that, you can keep it in your fridge and yeah. just add milk, you ice. You can add milk or ice in a, a, a basic simple syrup or your favorite sweetener, and you're ready to go. Just add ice. Woo. That, that's a lot easier than having to melt two ice cube my, trays my of ice. My wife loves it. She Does adds she like almond milk to it and she oh, really enjoys oh, it. Oh, I bet that's good. That we'll have to try be, that one, Jennifer. Yeah, that one be Now, good. what is this thing that looks like a beer bottle sitting over here? That's just an odd mix of beer and <laughs> that, coffee. Well, that I is, mean, maybe it's not. Maybe it's no, very. It's a great mix. <laughs> yeah. That actually is a coffee IPA uh, from another local business, uh, Conquest Brewing Company. Uh -huh. We partner, That's a local one. Yeah, well, they're yeah. right across the street. We partner with them on this. They use the cold brew coffee concentrate add it to their IPA. And it makes a very delicious uh, IPA. It kind of takes a little bit of the hoppiness off, 
but it's very delicious. I may have to taste that at the end of the show because I don't <laughs> like all that hoppy business. But I think, but I love to to deal with the local crafters. I and think so you I would think enjoy that would be it. fun. Yeah, and yeah. you've got another really great local connection with the bourbon barrel. Yeah, right? like I said, we like to partner with everyone local that's out there trying to make it happen just like we are. And we actually source um, our bourbon barrels from Crouch Distillery, which is also right next to Conquest mm -hmm. Brewery. And we age unroasted coffee in there for two months in an empty really? bourbon barrel. Uh -huh. And the result, it pulls in the bourbon and oak flavors from the barrel, and then we roast it and it stays in there. It's very delicious. You can, it's even good. I noticed you said you like it with cream and sugar. It actually tastes like a Bailey's Irish cream when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's, I, I think you've got, you said you had an artistic bent, and I see that. Because tell us kind of what the reference point is of that beautiful um, wax ceiling. Yeah, we kind of <coughs> manipulate our logo a little bit to incorporate the bourbon barrel, and then we, we wanted to take a little throw back to the bourbon and add a little wax seal to it and um, kind of like maker's mark yeah, That's go back to the maker's mark yeah, yeah yeah and i think even a little artistic um at, at reference to the state flag tell me about your yeah motto. we wanted to kind of move away from the cliche coffee mug with sure. steam coming out for a logo so we chose the middle section to be a porta filters which is what's used to extract espresso and then we threw the you know, crescent the crescent moon in the corner to kind yeah. of represent so that we're proud of our yeah. state. So Now, if I come up and find your place, um, do I park my car and get out, or how does all this work? You, uh, it's designed to be a drive through We welcome you to just pull right on, enjoy the convenience of your car, and just let us hand it right into the window. I'm going to have to try that in the morning. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and I think that, but if I did come inside, I might see an example of what really a coffee plant looks like. And unlike the poor man who had yellow leaves on his gardenia, your That's coffee beautiful. plant looks. But of course, coffee is not going to um, go through its fu fru fruition and, and set <laughs> seeds and flower in South Carolina. But it's fun just to have an it's example fun of what to have it looks it, like. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is this stuff about community? How do you get coffee connected with having three children and events at schools and things like well, that? Well, it has its moments, but uh, really the community has kind of rallied around our business. We've invested in them and then in return they've given us their business and they've become kind of like family. So we have uh, our local police officers, our first responders are coming through and we support them. All of our fa uh, CrossFit family come through and they're into working out. So we, we have a nice little tight-knit community. Just so, through the drive-thru window, Just through the drive-thru. Huh? That is fun. I love that. And of course, you have a whole community of people who are associated with you. And we know that in South Carolina, if we want to really promote our local economy, our South Carolina economy, and help these businesses grow, we can preferentially come and say, well, if I need something, why don't I look up and see if there's somebody in South Carolina who's pr providing it? That's right. I think people like to eat and drink things that make them feel good about their health and their environment and their local economy and so definitely and to know the story of the person who's behind and it. to know exactly. the person uh, definitely so, so tell us how we find out about the specialty foods people you can find our uh, buyers catalog on our website scsfa.org it's got all of our association members in there with their contact info and a little bit more about their products and uh, Beach, why don't you tell us more where people can find you? And how to find this drive through place. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're uh, at 7001 St. Andrews Road uh, near Irmo High School is where our drive through is. Um, all these that we talked about up here are available there with the exception of the coffee yes. IPA, of course. <laughs> um, that can be picked up anywhere around town. But uh, we, as all this is available and then also our website at lovelandcoffee.com and you can always check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. And then I guess this one, do you do you, do you go and participate at Soda City or is this one just named for the wonderful... I know, we're just, it's, yeah. uh, it's just named for, for the, the city in general. For the wonderful people yes. who yeah. have started having local foods available on Saturdays. Yeah, and it's all. a great thing. Yeah, a great way to pull all of you great people together who are coming up with wonderful ideas and showing off the very best of South Carolina or the very best of the world as it's interpreted in South Very Carolina. Well. That's right. <laughs> well, we sure do. Thank you. And I must tell you, I'm, I'm just going to have to take this back up there with <laughs> me. So, really I'm good. sorry, Jennifer. She wanted me to leave it for her. <laughs> Thank I'll you so much. Thank you.